Our childhood is supposed to be filled with happiness, fun, and joy. However, some kids choose to spend their childhood tormenting others and committing serious crimes. Here are 10 of the most dangerous kids who are now serving life sentences. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Dylan Shoemaker is often considered one of the most heartless children to have been arrested. Dylan appeared in court after he was accused of purposely taking the life of a young boy. According to the police, the boy was having a fit and would not stop crying. Dylan took matters into his own hands, with him being arrested a short time later. The young boy was just shy of two years old, leading the judge to have very little remorse for Dylan. As he was being sentenced, he tearfully apologized to the family, insisted that he never meant to hurt the boy. I didn't mean to hurt him! However, piles of evidence proved otherwise. Dylan and his defense attorney did the best they could to ask for a minimum sentence in the case, but he was given life in prison. Prison officers who were on site showed no emotion as they restrained Dylan, who must now face the consequences of his actions. Joshua Phillip was just 14 years old when he committed an awful crime. He lived across the street from an 8-year-old girl named Maddie. In November of 1998, Joshua was home alone while his parents were at work. Maddie knocked on the front door and asked Joshua to play ball with her. The two played in the front yard for a while, but tragedy struck when Joshua hit the ball and it struck Maddie in the face. Instead of calling for help, Joshua took the girl inside and claimed her life. The girl was reported missing immediately, but no one knew that Joshua was to blame. A large search party was organized, with Joshua offering his assistance in trying to locate the girl. After a few days, the girl was found hidden beneath Joshua's bed. Police showed up at Joshua's high school and arrested him. He was taken to trial and was sentenced to life without parole. Average on growing up maturing. The fact that I had to come to terms in dealing with that I'm going to die in here, I might do 60, 70 years in prison, really helped me mature and, and helped me grow. Uh, morally and, and, and it helped me, de help me develop empathy, uh, a, a much stronger empathy now. Brian Lee Draper and Tori Adamsick were friends from high school. In September of 2006, they devised a plan to claim the life of a classmate after school one evening. The two young men learned that their friend Cassie would be home alone on the night of September 22, 2006. Brian, Tori, and Cassie's friend Matt were all invited to the home to watch a movie. Brian and Tori left sometime that afternoon, claiming they were going to the local theater to watch a film. However, they went home to collect weapons and returned to the house. When they returned, they entered through an unlocked basement door and waited for Matt to leave. After he left, the boys cut off the power to the house. It didn't take long for the teens to begin their plan to attack Cassie, eventually claiming her life around 11 p.m. When they were taken into questioning, the boys explained that the Columbine Massacre was a major inspiration for their attack explaining that they wanted the fame of being such cold-hearted criminals. Both were later convicted and sentenced to life in prison. GI Bill number one. We have to take the plan. And she's perfect, so she's gonna die. <laughs> Keandria Cook has essentially given her life to the prison system after she was involved in a series of crimes that led to the robbery of a teenager she met through an online dating service. The teen was also severely injured in the attack, leading the judge and jury to offer very little pity in the case. Cook appeared in court to receive her sentence for carjacking, attempted carjacking with a weapon, and felony battery. She was given 20 years for carjacking, 15 years for attempted carjacking with a weapon, and 15 years for battery. This case is heartbreaking on so many levels. It's awful that the victim was attacked in such a terrible way, but equally disturbing that a young girl now has to live the remainder of her life in prison. Regardless of the sentencing, there's no happy ending in cases like this. These two young children will now never lead normal lives, simply due to poor decisions that were made by a teenager. The youngest man ever convicted of murder in Kent County was given a life sentence for his crimes. The case involved a 13-year-old boy who claimed another's life, leading to one of the tensest and most heartbreaking cases in Kent County history. The boy had allegedly used a weapon against his mother's boyfriend, though the boy's mother spoke in his defense in court, justifying his actions and insisting that the judge realize that he is only a child. The mother defended her son up until his sentencing, walking with him every step of the way. The boy's mother believes that her boyfriend could have been abusing her son, claiming that the boy's actions could have been in self-defense. While this sounds perfectly reasonable, the police investigated these claims and found no evidence that either the young boy or his mother had ever been abused. The victim's family also claimed that their loved one would never have done such a thing, 
The young boy was facing life in prison at the time of the outburst, with the courts finding no evidence that the young boy or his mother had ever been abused. This is a very interesting case to say the least. Jesse Pomroy was once known as the youngest serial criminal in world history. He's known to have brutally attacked countless young boys in his local area, with the crimes following him after he and his family moved to a different city. He was eventually arrested for the crimes and sent to trial. His arrest shocked everyone in the city, with many wondering how such a seemingly innocent boy could do such horrible things. Several of his victims were left with permanent scars as a result of the attack, with one of his victims losing her life. The families of the victims were left begging for answers, and it seems as though their wishes were finally granted when Jesse was tried and convicted. The judge handed down a disturbing punishment, the death penalty. However, the governor refused to honor this decision, leading to the boy's sentence to be commuted to life in prison. He passed away when he was 72 years old. Curtis Brooks and three other individuals committed a terrible crime back in 1995. Curtis was arrested when he was just 15 years old after he had been involved in a carjacking that led to the occupant losing his life. The details of the crime are far too dark to explain, but this was a heartless attack against an innocent life. While Curtis was seriously involved in the crime, he was not the one that claimed the victim's life. The crime was carried out equally by all three of the people involved. However, Curtis was still given a life sentence with no possibility of parole as a result of his choices. This was one of the largest sentences ever given to a teenager at the time. Many of the lawmakers in the area questioned how realistic such a punishment was for a young boy. A short time later, a new law was passed that changed Curtis's sentence, allowing him to be paroled after 24 years behind bars. We hope Curtis was able to receive the rehabilitation he desperately needed behind bars. In July of 1999, Lionel Tate's mother was babysitting a six-year-old girl. His mother left him in charge of entertaining the girl for a short time, with the two hanging out downstairs in their home, while the mother took care of the chores around the house. About 45 minutes later, Lionel came running to his mother claiming that the young girl was not breathing. After the young girl was reviewed by a coroner, it became clear that Lionel had acted out in a fit of rage against the girl. Before long, Lionel was being tried as an adult in a felony case that saw him being locked away for the rest of his life with no chance of parole. In 2004, his sentence was overturned and he was resentenced to house arrest. It didn't take long for Lionel to violate the terms of his agreement. Just eight months later, he was arrested after he had exited his home illegally. In May of the following year, he was arrested once again after he threatened the life of a pizza delivery man. He was sent through court once again and was sentenced to 30 years for his crimes and the violation of his probation. Dexter Johnson was arrested after he took the life of another person. He was sent through the court system and found guilty. He appeared in court in June of 2015 to receive his sentencing and a dramatic scene unfolded, leading Dexter to flip several chairs, causing his mother to have an emotional outburst as well. These actions didn't help his case one bit and proved that he was the vicious monster that the courts claimed him to be. Dexter was eventually given the death penalty for his crimes. His family claims that his punishment is far too severe for such a young man. Samantha Grigg was once an amazing singer for a local band at her university. However, she decided to take her life down a much darker path when she claimed the life of a local teen. The young man's family appeared in court, condemning her and pleading with the judge in court to properly punish her for what she had done. Samantha worked alongside two other teens to rob the young man and severely injure him. It remains unknown if the group planned on taking his life, but that's what eventually took place. In court, Samantha refused to acknowledge her victim by name and read through an emotionless apology to his family. He was a fellow musician. It really breaks my heart. And I, I wish I could take it back every day. She's expected to serve a minimum of 15 years for her crimes, while the other two offenders are expected to serve life in prison. 